Uh, hello and uh, welcome to Gunnar Weisskamp's web development. Uh, here we are in lesson two, uh, part one, creating a, creating a database. Uh, we're going to create a database and a table. Uh, this lesson will be split into two because we're going to cover <coughs> a few different concepts and I really want to talk in depth. Um, uh, so we'll be learning how to create a table and a database I should have written on there. <coughs> as, as it mentions up there, uh, and we will learn and talk about the following concepts, uh, primary and foreign keys, <coughs> nullable and non-nullable columns, link tables, table constraints, the different data types SQL Server uses, <coughs> how to insert data onto the tables, and then how to read that information, because once this process is uh, done, we want to see the tables functioning working in a um, understandable manner. <coughs> so I'm using here uh, SQL Server 2014 <coughs> as you can see there so um, if you need uh, you can use that one. Uh, please see my previous tutorial about downloading uh, SQL Server. Uh, so let's keep this uh, one open. That would be a good start so we can refer back to what we're trying to do. <coughs> Alright, so here <coughs> as we can see we've um, from my previous tutorial got a few databases there <coughs> and we have this school database here with uh, certain tables and um, stored procedures which we talked about in the last tutorial. <coughs> what we're going to do now is show you how that was created. <coughs> so first we go into new database And watch the little spinning thing for a little bit. <coughs> okay, finally comes up. So in here, there's a number of a uh, few things. Here's obviously the database name. We're going to call this just school data uh, database. <coughs> well, in here, is, uh, there's a couple of things in here. Is your log file will be created. You can create the initial size of your database in there um, to the size that you'd like to make it. <coughs> Auto growth. Um, in here, you can set a special property which uh, will allow your database to automatically grow, um, which can be a bit of a scary thing if you think about it and do it incorrectly but so that's what this auto grow does you can set it there to auto grow <coughs> uh, in different sizes and so forth <coughs> um, and here is uh, your school database log file and here is kept key information about how the database is working and um, you can see that information in these drives here. Um, but yeah, the basics of it, so I won't go into owner, is I'm just going to give you the, a very simple way of creating a database and creating the tables for that database. So once we've done that, we just click on add. Oops, no, we don't. No, <laughs> no. remove. Uh, sorry, we click OK. <coughs> and while that's going, We'll grab the first one of our couple of scripts here. Oops, that's not the one I wanted. Step one. <coughs> so let's grab this little script here. And while that's going along, um, we can have a brief talk about it, but it's already come across. <coughs> so Clicking on this new query window allows you to um, pick a script area where you can do your scripting. <coughs> now, in here, you got to um, we're gonna you select the database that you want to script our new table to. That's what the script is going to do. We're going <coughs> to create a table, and that table is going to be called Course Info. <coughs> now, there's a big reason I'm creating this one first. 
If you do remember from our previous tutorial, there are three tables in this process. Uh, course Info, Student Info and Teacher Info. Course Info is going to be our link table. Uh, so it'll link from, it'll allow linkage between these two and these two to provide information. To link, so for a link, the link table has to be created before the other tables that link to it. And if you think about it, it makes sense, because the other tables can't link to this table if it's not there. <coughs> so this is our link table and we have to create it first. Um, <coughs> I'll try to break some of the syntax down for you. This table is going to have two fields, an ID and a course description. Uh, we've already got some data, data types here to talk about, which we said we would. It's The ID is going to be of int value. And the course uh, description is going to be varchar. Varchar means it can hold alphanumeric, uh, numbers, and text information. <coughs> uh, the course description can only be 500 uh, characters long. This here identity uh, keyword is quite important because what the ID will be, it'll be a primary key. And uh, <coughs> a primary key is a form of constraint. So just in this one little piece of code, <laughs> exactly, there's a lot of um, things to talk about. So what is a primary key constraint? Uh, a primary key, key constraint allows you later on, if you're looking up information on this table, is to look it up easier and quicker. You're giving the table uh, a process or some information so it can look it up easier. And that's what this primary key does. It's like giving, if you walk into a library, <coughs> and if you know a book is in the fiction area or in the history area, you already know which way to go. <coughs> so by giving this table a key to look up its information, <coughs> it's already going to work quicker. A table uh, with outer primary key, if I remember correctly, is known as a heap and it will not perform very well in table scanning. So as a general guidance, uh, rule of thumb, always try to give all your tables some sort of uh, primary key. <coughs> um, well that's my spin of it. Uh, in here, this is where that constraint is added into the mix as well. So that's what that code does there. Um, this not null keyword. Now, we, I was going to talk about nullable and not nullable, <coughs> as we talked about as well. Not null, so what does null mean? Uh, null means there is no value in that field. If a field has got null, it's got no value. <coughs> Don't get that mixed up with an empty field. A field can be empty, which might hold an empty string, an empty thi thing. But if a field holds null, that is meant to be um, not touched or never, or just has got nothing in it. <coughs> um, and so by saying this not null, uh, here, <coughs> every time information is put in this field here, you have to put information on there, because that's what not null means. If it was just null, you could put an empty um, value in there. <coughs> and that's the same with this one. So later on, I'll, if I remember correctly, um, we'll try to put uh, some empty information into this table and you'll see this constraint come into play. This constraint here will say you cannot enter any information into this table because uh, null, not null values are not allowed. <coughs> so this is, so now that we no, well, now that we well, let's execute and we should get a table created so let's have a quick look let's refresh this let's open it up <coughs> and there's our course info table created super duper um, right so now let's we get step two so this is step two. This is a <coughs> script for our student info table. Some of the parameters are similar to that table that we just talked about. We've got our create table here. Uh, same sort of stuff. We've got our identity. <coughs> but so, well, one thing I will bring up <coughs> with this identity 
uh, in this in this in this case, this identity of this here means that um, this table's primary key of ID will be self-seeding. What that means every time a item is inserted on this student info table, <coughs> um, this field here will get its own value created by a SQL Server and by its own process. You cannot insert your own ID number on there. <coughs> that's what it means by self-seeding. Uh, and that's a good practice to do, <coughs> generally, because um, you're just letting SQL Server do all the work. <coughs> so in this uh, student info table, we've got a few fields here. Again, ID, that's going to be its primary key uh, for that table. It's got a course ID, <coughs> a full name, and an age. Uh, we can see here this int type come, come around again. <coughs> and um, uh, of special focus is this course ID. This is going to be our foreign key linking. Uh, so this foreign key here links into this ID key here. We briefly did talk about that in the first lesson. So um, that's that's why this is known as a linked table. <coughs> so that's the relationship between these tables is defined by these, this key and this uh, key here, ID. Um, so that's mostly this code up here explained. This little piece of code here <coughs> uh, is when we're going to add our foreign key in. This piece of code here will create that relationship between the student info table and the course info table. <coughs> How does this work? Uh, so we use this, well, um, in here we're actually altering the table, student info, and we're adding add the foreign key. So these two keywords come into play. <coughs> and this course ID is created here. So what you're saying, in this table, in this field, <coughs> make sure it references this table and this field here. This table and this field here. So it's saying you guys are related. So that's what this piece of code does. It creates our foreign key <coughs> for this table. <coughs> okay, so um, yeah, uh, let's execute that. Okay, so that's that done. Step three. Oops, don't need it all. So now we're doing the teacher table. <coughs> That was the student table, teacher table. Uh, somewhat the same um, as the student table. So you can, this is a little bit different, but you can build on your knowledge. <coughs> we have got a different uh, um, data type here being used, the decimal for the salary. Uh, so a teacher has a salary. That's going to be just the main difference between the student table and the, and the teacher uh, table. <coughs> here in the teacher info table uh, we are again referencing this table here with this course ID and again here is the same foreign key script that's going to create that relationship but this time instead of the uh, students we're doing, it, we're doing it on the teacher info table one thing that I do want to point out here is this salary field is an example where you can insert nothing on it because this is you're saying here you can insert null uh, you can insert nothing so here you have null and here you have not null <coughs> so here you always have to insert a value which will be created from this table here but here you're saying if you're going to insert on the table you can actually you don't have to insert anything there <coughs> and we uh, will demonstrate that in two seconds all right, uh, execute. All right, okay. <clears throat> All right, so that was pretty straightforward. Um, step, what have we got here? Uh, yep, step four. <clears throat> So, and when inserting information on these tables, it has to be done in a certain sequence. Uh, we first have to insert information on our course info table, because it's the link table. And 
remember if let's refresh this here <coughs> um, uh, we have to first insert information on the on the link table um, <coughs> because uh, we want to link this information to these tables here and we can't link information on these tables if there's no information already to link to so when it comes to defining link tables and other tables relationship uh, as a rule of thumb just remember to do everything that is needed for the link table first because you can't link this you can't link information to this table if there's no information there <coughs> so all we have here is a uh, simple insert into our course info table the course description and we're going to uh, put in the various courses <coughs> now notice if you look in our course info table <coughs> we have two columns we have the ID and the course description uh, you might be saying well where's the ID why aren't you inserting on the ID because as, as I mentioned, the ID will be self-inserting, it's self-seeding. And you'll see that after we run this script. <clears throat> okay, so that's all there. Let's just... So now if we look at the table... Oops. And if we run that, you see, notice here is that the IDs fill themselves in. One, two, three. And obviously, it's always unique. It's self-seeding. These will always be unique in their own value. But here, when we did the insert statement, we didn't put one in there. <coughs> if we try that, <coughs> uh, just say... Um, computers as a course and if we put in here five and we put in here ID so what we're saying is that here we want to insert values in this table using all the full syntax we should get uh, an issue pop up see so cannot insert explicit value for identity column in course info with identity insert is set to off <coughs> So more or less what that's saying, this guy here always inserts its own information. Uh, okay, so that's our course info table done. <coughs> right, so we're actually getting through this quicker than I thought, and I might just I might just make this a not not two parts, but uh, just one part. Because we are actually getting through this quicker than I, then well, I, I think we're, well, hopefully I'm explaining it not too quick, too, not too quick. Um, okay, so anyway, we've uh, inserted information in our course info table, our link tab. Now we're inserting information on one of the other two tabs, which is our student and teacher info table. <coughs> uh, as you can see, we only have to reference three fields, and we have here on our table how many fields? We have four fields. Again, the ID field will be um, self seed and um, so we don't have to uh, use put a value in that. Only the other only the other fields do we need to actually insert values. Uh, so course ID, full name, age, we're inserting in that. <coughs> Let's give this a go. So that's all done. That's, and so we can see there, uh, we have our ID self-seeding like we did before, and we've got this course ID uh, being referenced here from our course info table. And the other two factors filled in as well. Okay, so we are getting through this quite well. Okay, so... Now we're doing the same in the teacher info table. Its structure is more or less the same, but just remember the columns here. We also have salary. So
So we could do, and we will do this. saying the last teacher has a salary Fred Kong has a salary of 20,000 oops that's not good of uh, 20,012 cents uh, so that's is going to be his salary we also have to put that uh, field in put that in so uh, here a course ID is that going to be that for that course ID salary is for this field 20,012 full name Fred Kong age is 29 <clears throat> uh, so for the other two we're not going to put that in because we don't have to because this here as you can see allows null so it means we don't have to put that information in so if we now run that <coughs> if we now select each info We can see here the, the differences between the student table and the other table. Uh, this one has a field where you can put null in. In other words, you don't have to worry about putting information in because it's not that important. We can, from from our business perspective, it's not that important. That can be added later. Put it that way. Um, so that's the big difference there in a way. <coughs> um, cool. So now. We have all that information, really. Let's have a quick look. Uh, So there we have our complete table structure structure uh, with its corresponding in information. And as mentioned before, the course ID here has to correspond to one of these guys here. <coughs> now, uh, I just briefly, so if we go back to what we initially looked at um, talking about. Um, so we've looked at nullable and non-nullable columns, link tables, we've talked about that. Um, this primary and foreign key keys we sort of talked about, table constraints, these can be sort of demonstrated together with this here. Uh, we have talked about the different data types um, and we've looked at how to insert and how to read that information. <coughs> so, whoops, what have I done? Um, so you might be wondering this constrainy stuff. <coughs> if I try to insert into Info <coughs> Right now if I and we do six um oops <coughs> James Bond is going to be our teacher and he's going to be 37 years old <coughs> so that's what we're putting here we're going to try to put this here in our table we're going to put a course ID of 6 uh, a name of James Bond and his age is 37 <coughs> this will fail oh, at least I hope so and this is what talk is, is talked about when you're saying something is constrained, when database constraints come in. Because this table is constrained to not allow this information in <coughs> due to its foreign key relationship um, between uh, the these two tables here, teacher info and course info. Why is that? Because course info does not have a course ID of 6. It only has a... Uh, three courses and the ID is one, two or three. It has no course ID of <coughs> uh, six. So it'll say, no, bad luck, do not try air, um, not going to work. Yes, see, there we go. Uh, the insert, insert statement conflicted with the foreign key constraint, which is this teacher uh, course constraint. 
um, and this is the table which it uh, fell into. <coughs> so we cannot insert this value of 6 here. <coughs> and um, that is what's called, again, a constraint in uh, SQL Server, which we were looking to uh, mention here, um, the table constraint. So that's uh, what is called a foreign key constraint. Uh, so, <coughs> if we were to change that to 2, a course which is in here, see we can see this English course here, this will now work. <coughs> so, if we now look at our teacher information stuff, ta-da, we have Mr. James Bond, because that course is in our course table. Um, Right, so I think, so that's, so from this basic tutorial, I'm hoping you've been able to see how you can create a database, some tables within that, and read information about that. This course was going to be in two, that's what I said on my title. I'm going to leave it as one, <coughs> because I went, uh, was able to go through this quicker than I thought I would. So uh, we will leave that, whoops, I'm clicking too quick, whoa, whoa, uh, so we're going to leave that as it is, um, and I hope you got some good information out of that, and I hope to see you in my next tutorial. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks.